Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel, or welcome in if you're new, I'm Chani, and today we're watching Kyrgyzstan, the deadliest virus on earth. Live on twitch.tv slash Chanzonia, join us next time, and let's just get to it. In the 1970s, thousands of chicken heads rained from the sky in Europe, what? making foxes and other wildlife confused and very happy. Why? Happy, happy, They were happy. filled with a vaccine to fight the deadliest virus known to humanity. Arabies. Since the 1930s, a rabies epidemic had been sweeping across wildlife populations in Europe, and humans wanted to finally get rid of the virus once and for all. Mm. Rabies is named after Lyssa, the ancient Greek spirit Lyssa. of mad rage, and has been haunting us for at least 4,000 years. It can turn animals into angry beasts, and humans into zombies that fear water. But what makes Lyssa fascinating is not just how bizarre and deadly its infection is, but also how incredibly good it is at avoiding our defenses. Their intro is so cool. Here's the fact. Viruses exist on the edge between life and death, hardly more than a few genetic instructions that need living cells to multiply. The Lyssa virus is simple even for a virus. It has only five genes, that is, the instructions for five proteins that let it solve complex problems. Infect a mammal, mm. avoid its immune system, travel to its brain, make Ooh. more of itself, and infect new hosts. Let's see what happens if you get infected. Okay. It all starts with a bite, most likely. Wait, so... The deadliest virus is rabies? Is that what we're getting at here? Because in the beginning they said it's named after the Greek goddess of madness, Lyssa. But it's called rabies, so how did we... what? ...by a dog carrying millions of viruses in its saliva, pushing them Nar. deep into the tissue. The goal is your nerve cells, your neurons. They are living electrochemical wires, transferring signals throughout your body and can stretch for up to one and a half meters with their cellular machinery on one end and a terminal on the other. Mm -hmm. The terminal is where cells talk to each other by passing chemicals that convey information. Lissa probably binds to the receptors that are crucial for this process and slips inside the unsuspecting nerve cells. Inside, the virus has to solve a big problem. It needs to get to the cellular machinery to take over the cell and it's make gonna hack into viruses, it, huh? and because neurons are pretty long, this could be far away. There is a solution at hand, though. Cells have microtubules spanning their mm. insides that give them structural integrity. But they also provide a track system for a specialized delivery system. Dynian motors are actual motors that use energy and deliver packages. Wait, let me run that back. Integrity. But they also provide a track system for a specialized delivery system. Dynian motors are actual motors that. Dynian. You kind of look like a dinosaur, so I think I'm gonna remember that name. That Dyn. Dynian motor. It's like a little dinosaur. That use energy and deliver packages. They're made from 50 different proteins, 10 50. times more than the virus, and look like a little pair of shoes. Lissa uses one of its five proteins to hijack this amazing system and order no. it to head for the nucleus. What's the immune system doing to prevent all of that? Well, unfortunately, not much. Usually, when a virus attacks, your civilian cells are crucial in activating your immune response. They notice that they've been infected and release hundreds of thousands of a special family of proteins. The interferons that, well, interfere with viruses. We'll have w to simplify a lot, but in a nutshell, interferons, interferons interfere. alert your immune system to make antivirus weapons. But they do much more. They tell civilian cells to turn down their protein factories for a while, which means mm. that viruses can't replicate efficiently anymore. And interferons tell your cells to become super transparent, which is important because how can your immune cells notice that your civilian cells are infected when viruses hide inside them? Your body solves this by creating display windows into their inside. Dude, the human body is so complex and like fascinating. Like all of this is just happening and you don't even know about it. You don't even sense it. You just it just does. It just works and does its thing and knows what to do most of the time most of the time now if you're suffering from immune deficiency or autoimmune stuff it could possibly be different but it's just so fascinating that it just knows what to do all the time besides called mhc class <gasps> one MHC. molecules cells this is ringing a bell i'm remembering to like and to show lessons to your now. immune cells what's going on inside them they take random samples of their products and put them into these tiny display windows to give a peek inside 
Interferons like tiny turn beds. themselves to make way more display windows and become super transparent. If a cell is infected and forced to make virus parts, your immune cells will see these parts in a window mm. and order the infected cell to kill itself and all the viruses trapped within. Oh my god, that sounded so crazy to order it to self-delete. Okay. This is one of the most powerful methods of wiping out there. a viral infection. Unfortunately, Lissa blocks your neurons from making interferons and stays basically invisible to your immune system. In contrast to many other viruses, when it replicates, it doesn't kill its host, which would also trigger alarm mm. systems. Instead, it stealthily jumps from neuron to neuron, very slowly making its way neuron to your brain. Neuron hopping is crazy. This phase can take weeks to months and very rarely even years and depends on a bunch of things like if the bite was in your face or foot or how many viruses got into your muscles. Lissa oh, is a patient monster. Until it reaches its goal, your brain Which stand. is the brain. Mm -hmm. Finally, the immune system catches on that something isn't right and reacts. It but won't it be too late then? By the time it reaches and then it reacts? Dispatches some of killer your most T -cells. powerful antivirus cells, killer T cells, to seek and kill infected cells and wipe out the enemy. In other viral infections, this would be a turning point, but in rabies, the T cells are rushing towards their doom. Simple Lissa, mm -hmm. with its five proteins, plays a Uno reverse card, using Uno the immune reverse. system's ingenuity against itself. Your central. Wait, so it's using. So it learned the mechanics and was like, well, I'm gonna have you self destruct instead? That's Nervous right. system is a very fragile part of your body, and so the immune system has to be very careful. No. A few haywire immune cells in your brain is a quick way to die. So they aren't free to enter your nervous system. They have to be invited in and can be kicked out. To protect themselves, your nerve cells can order T cells to self-destruct if they think they're overreacting. And Lissa figured out a way to make infected neurons express this order. Oh. So as your powerful defense cells arrive, they are ordered to commit suicide. Now the virus infiltrates the brainstem. Once this stage is reached, you are going to die. How Lissa kills. One of the I most irritating it. things about the Lissa virus is that we still don't know exactly how and why an infected person dies. Our usual idea of viruses causing damage is by multiplying rapidly, killing their host cells once they've made enough copies, triggering a massive immune reaction that also does a lot of damage. But this doesn't seem to be what happens here. Brain tissue of rabies patients shows minimal, sometimes non-existent damage. Instead of murdering mm. everything in sight, it's currently thought that Lissa wreaks havoc by messing up the neuron communication inside your brain, so much mm. so that it can't function anymore. I mean, it, it did say that it hijacks a lot of like the other parts, so if it can order the T-cells to literally self-destruct, I'm sure it's also gonna order other parts of your body to do that no. this leads to symptoms like confusion aggression and paralysis it's causing you to go crazy now the virus begins to leave still traveling now it leaves after like causing a havoc through neurons it migrates away from the brain and heads for the salivary glands this mm. is remarkable because after traveling in one direction the virus reverses its course after decades of study we don't know how this works Lissa ends up saturating your saliva, ready for the irate mammal to bite another and repeat the cycle. Um, maybe silly question, but like, if a human with rabies bites you, you also get it, right? Or does it have to be an animal? While this seems like the beginning of a zombie outbreak, luckily there are no known cases oh. of a human biting another. Okay, never mind. My question has been answered. My silly question has been answered. And spreading rabies this way. Now, the end is near. You are rapidly developing encephalitis, a swelling of the brain with many unpleasant no. neurological symptoms from lethargy to paralysis. Slowly at first okay. and then suddenly, organ after organ fails as you mm. slip into a coma. There is no known effective therapy. Barely anyone has ever survived Lissa once symptoms begin to show. It is by far the deadliest virus we know. Except there is actually something that could save you. Oh. A vaccine. Rabies was one of the first diseases humans developed a vaccine for. As vaccines do, humans? it prepares your immune system for a future attack, so it has the right weapons ready in high numbers. 
The horrific tricks of simple litter don't work once you are vaccinated. And the vaccine is special for another reason. Because litter is so slow in the first few weeks, it can be given to you after you've been exposed. So you can still oh, be okay. vaccinated after you've been bitten by an animal. Which is super important if you've had contact with a sick wild animal, say a bat, because you often don't even notice a bite from tiny yeah, teeth. So tiny. Rabies is a monster. One that has followed our species around for thousands of years. That our ancestors were terrified of, and rightly so. Right, it's, it's literally good. like like he's they mentioned multiple times. It's like zombies. You literally turn to like a zombie. It's around sixty thousand people each year, oh almost my. half of them children. Oh no. We are far from eradicating this monster. It lurks in the shadows, in forests and animals of all kinds, ready to return in greater numbers if we ever forget how to keep it at bay, or if we continue the trend of being suspicious of vaccines. Let's hope that one day humanity slays this monster so it can become Slay. like most monsters part of our imagination imagination w's w that was the deadliest virus on earth arabis lissa lissa i think that's how they said it that was a really good video i enjoyed learning about it and the animations were as always very good very informative and illustrative so it was easy to follow and i enjoyed looking at the inner parts of the body and movements of like you know immune system because like you can't just see that every day you know but what makes it so that you become afraid of water what is it exactly i'm still confused on that so do let me know down in the comments but like always if you liked this video make sure you like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video bye